Management. Gramagat, uh, Laskan Korla and Gramagat Taktahai. Um, I'd like to start by saying it's an absolute privilege to contribute briefly to this generation defining piece of legislation. And I'd like to pay particular credit, not just to M Minister Smith, but also Minister Ryan and indeed his pre predecessor, Minister Bruton, who spoke el so eloquently in the chamber in the last hour about the truly uh, mag magnificent opportunities that this piece of legislation provides, not just for the entire country, but indeed the, the world and Europe at large. And I suppose, I think one thing when we look at this legislation, it's quite clear that when dealing with the climate emergency, that there is no one solution. It takes an all-encompassing approach that factors into every arm of government. And I'd like to take, take on from the point that Deputy Hahi finished on, in that the importance of buy-in. We need to get buy-in to this legislation, not just political buy-in. I, I welcome the fact that the vast majority of people who've contributed to this legislation so far in this debate have been in favour generally of it, although one or two people would like to see it go further and others don't even want to have the debate at all. But we do absolutely need to lead by example as public representatives, as political representatives, to ensure that we get buy-in to this, not just this particular bill, but what it is trying to achieve. That means buy-in from, from industry, from individuals, from society at large, from the agriculture sector, and so much more. But I think crucial to getting that buy-in is actually trying to achieve the rewards that this legislation provides. This should not all be about the stick. There is plenty of carrot in this legislation for everyone in society who seeks to seize the opportunity. The self ish reasons that backing this legislation is vitally important to the sustainability and future of this planet, but the selfish reasons that there are many new opportunities and industries um, provided within the schemes within this legislation. And I think it was Deputy Bruton who previously, previously referred to the opportunities when it comes to carbon farming and so much else. And I think about particularly the local opportunities. Minister Smith, when you, when you look southward from your home, you, you look up to my constituency and you see the beautiful Dublin Mountains and we look back and we think of the absolutely for, absolute foresight of one of the state's founders, Arthur Griffith, in pursuing one of the first afforestation programmes within the state, in the Dublin Mountains, places like uh, Ticknock, places like Tobraden, all these places that I love to spend the weekends with my kids, but also, crucially, that provide absolutely vital um, opportunities for the city. I remember attending uh, an opening of a, a wooded um, walkway and trail and that's now also got a mountain biking trail with uh, Minister Ryan when he was in the previous iteration of government when he referred to the Dublin Mountains as being the lungs of the capital. Well, through a widespread sensible, proper afforestation process, we are ensuring that the lungs of the entire country are maintained and have the opportunity to play their part in this. The other area which has been referred to in, in so many speeches in this House, not just when we're talking about climate emergency, but when we're talking about the situation when it comes to housing, when we're talking about our economy, when we're talking about the impact that COVID-19 is having on our societies, is the opportunity provided when it comes to remote working the opportunity to ensure that people can work from wh where they are from, taking pressures off our congested road, taking pressure off our urban areas and providing a much better balance of life for those people who want to be able to work close to where they're from. And that may be working at home or that may be working in remote working hubs. I had a conversation with a, a colleague the other day who was discussing in a small uh, rural town in his constituency how it was opening up uh, a, a remote hub for, with that had 20 desks in it. Well, that's 40 jobs, that's 50 jobs. And if a company came in and announced a 50 job um, development in that, uh, in that townland ordinarily, that would be front page news of the local paper. And that's how we have to see it. And that's how we have to harness every single aspect of government to play its part in tackling the climate emergency. And I think one thing that is really so critical is using um, this legislation as the marker to really embrace an imaginative solution to our public transport needs across the country, but particularly minister in our capital city, for those of us who represent constituencies that have a, a huge um, commuter base, a suburban constituency where people coming into the city centre. And we look at, obviously, the huge work that's been done by central government and by local authorities, and Deputy Hahi referred to it in terms of cycle lane provisions and greenway provisions, but also looking at the model for our public transport and ensuring that we have clean public transport. I welcome the pilot scheme by Dublin Bus of looking at electric 
electric buses, but I think we have to be imaginative. I think we have to look at the potential of um, utilising hydrogen buses as well. But crucially, Alaska and Corla, when we're talking about this issue that has framed the debate for this piece of legislation. I think we all acknowledge that it will not be solved by one piece of legislation, by one public representative, by one government, by one country. And the international dynamic of tackling the climate emergency should not be lost on any of us for one instance. Yes, we are a small country. We're an island in the Atlantic with a relatively small population and a relatively low industrial um, makeup of our economy. But we can lead we can lead within the European Union. We can lead within the global community because we have to take it on the chin that we simply have not. And we have to take the criticism that has come from global agencies, from various uh, NGOs and lobby groups and acknowledge that yes, we have been laggards in this area. But if you look at what has been done over the last couple of years and what is contained in this legislation, and it shows the potential for Ireland to move from the back of the class right up to the front of the class. But it takes sacrifice, it takes commitment, it takes imagination, it takes groundbreaking legislation like this in order for us to achieve um, those goals and those opportunities. Deputy Hawley mentioned um, the impact of the United States government thankfully coming back into the Paris Climate Accords and that is so important and it's to ensure that within the European Union that policies within the New Green Deal are reflected not just in our domestic legislation but in every single conversation in every single function of the European Council of Ministers at an EU level. It doesn't matter if it's, a, it's an agri council, a fisheries council, a health council, an economy council, a justice council. Everything has to come back to the biggest challenge that is facing this generation, that is tackling the climate emergency. The pandemic will come and go. It has made a lasting effect and it's proving um, disastrous for so many families and households and so many businesses across the world, particularly in this country. But the challenge of the climate emergency will not go with a vaccination. It has to be uh, approached in such a coherent manner. And I think that's why it's so important when we look at our scope for partnerships, when we look at our energy security, that we ensure that Brexit does not have that massive detrimental impact on our energy supply that we rely on the UK for so many of our imports. But we look at um, really embracing the Celtic internet interconnector that will see energy brought from continental Europe, from France, landing into Cork. That is something that shows the huge potential for Ireland and France to work proactively and progressively together within the European Union. Ireland and France have a really strong relationship, Las Cain Corla, when it comes to um, dealing with the common agricultural policy, when it comes to the future of our agri-food sector. Well, we need to take that initiative and those decades of cooperation between the French and Irish governments and throw that into energy supply, energy security, to ensure that as we develop our own domestic energy generation capacities, be it, be it through wind, be it through wave, be it through solar and everything else, that when we do need to import, we're importing clean energy from continental reliable sources. And I think that provides, again, a huge operation for international cooperation, Minister. And it just gets to the heart of this piece of legislation and why it is so important for us as a small, open, liberal democracy within the European Union to be shown to lead. We have a really proud history in this state of our overseas development aid work going back to the time of the missions. And we know that climate change impacts the poorest in the world more than anyone else. And you can see it, anyone who's travelled around Central Africa and they see the, the desertification process and we see the droughts and we see um, the wildfires in other parts of the world and we see that this is focused on those who are most exposed and that's why it falls on us as a developed country, as a country that has so many privileges laid upon us by geography, by economy and so much else, to seize that responsibility to show leadership not just to the people in our own country but in the wider world. There are many aspects of this legislation that I hope to be able to contribute at a, late, to, at a later stage, Lassica and Corla, when we get into committee stage, when we get into report stage. But at this very general stage, um, when I have the opportunity to contribute on this legislation, I would like to wholeheartedly uh, commend this piece of legislation to the House. It was a, it was a privilege to spend a, a couple of hours subbing in to the committee that did so much work uh, in recent months to bring this to this stage. I thank the Minister for his time, I thank for his indulgence, and I am absolutely uh, grateful for the opportunity to speak tonight. Last concordia.